Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, dedicated to informing residents about healthcare topics and issues. Through programs featuring community forums and free health and wellness classes, our goal is to empower community members with the information needed to make informed health decisions. Washington Hospital has been providing health care to the residents of the Washington Township Healthcare District for the past 60 years. Today's presenter is Temi Leung. Temi Leung is a registered dietitian at Washington Hospital Healthcare System. Hello everyone, my name is Temi, a dietitian, and I'm going to be talking about sugar sweeteners. So we're first going to have a mini introduction, and then we're going to talk about caloric sweeteners, low caloric sweeteners, non caloric sweeteners, and some products. So in the diabetes management triad, we have the diet, the exercise, and medication. And in the middle is monitoring your sugars. And so sugar sweeteners are going to be part of this diet section. So some people think that diabetes is caused by sugar intake, but it's actually caused by genetics and lifestyle factors. However, there are research shown that sugary drinks are linked to type 2 diabetes. So sugar sweetened beverages include regular soda, fruit punch, fruit drinks, energy drinks, sports drinks, sweet tea, and stuff like that. And so the key to having sweets overall is to have only small portions for special occasions. And so caloric sweeteners is the most common, and these raises your blood sugars exponentially. And so these are your regular table sugar, agave, coconut sugar, fruit concentrate, dextrose, honey, maple syrup, molasses, and even jaggery. So our body digests these sugars the same, regardless of what type it is. And then people often ask if brown sugar is better than regular table sugar. So that kind of answers your question there that the body digests it the same way. And brown sugar just contain molasses that makes it, that gives it its brown color. And jaggery is unrefined cane sugar. So that's still sugar. And jaggery contains 70% sucrose, whereas white table sugar contains 99.7% sucrose. So you still have that 70% that is just pure sugar. And so if you are into having bubble tea or like milk teas and stuff like that, here's a nifty little chart of showing how much tablespoons of sugar is in each type of drink. And it will vary depending on the store and how much their 100% sugar is. And obviously, if you're ordering 25%, 30%, it's going to be less than this. And so you can see here, this regular bubble tea drink has 20.5 tablespoons of sugar for a 500 milliliter drink. And this winter melon has 16 prints. 16 tablespoons of sugar. And for some, you can't even choose sugar levels, such as this brown sugar bone milk tea. And then these fruit teas have the least amount of sugar. And then here we have a table of sweetened, sugar sweetened beverages. Juice has 17 teaspoons of sugar. Soda here for a 20 fluid ounce is 15 teaspoons. Energy drinks, any around 13 teaspoons. And then this vitamin added water has eight teaspoons. So even though it has vitamins, it's gonna have sugar as well. And same with sports drinks. And then if you are buying coffee drinks from like Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, and even McDonald's, they have sugar in their drinks. So 10 grams is around 2.4 teaspoons. 
So if you were to go to Starbucks and buy a caramel frappuccino grande, this is their new version. For 16 fluid ounces, it's going to be 49 grams of sugar. And that's around 11.8 teaspoons. So that's quite a lot of sugar. And then if you're buying a venti white chocolate mocha, it's going to be 18 teaspoons of sugar. So that's a lot for one drink. So low caloric sugar sweeteners are metabolized and digested differently. So they may rise your blood sugars, but not as much as table sugar. And in excess, it can cause gastrointestinal discomfort, like diarrhea. And these include allulose and sugar alcohols. Allulose is similar, has a similar chemical structure as fructose. It's just arranged slightly differently. And it does not raise your blood sugars and is not metabolized by your body. And as mentioned earlier, it may cause gastrointestinal discomfort. And here's just a picture of a bag of allulose sweeteners that you can just buy. And then sugar alcohols are considered tooth friendly. So if they're like sugar free mints or like gum, those are all sugar alcohols. And they're fermented in the gut, which makes it hard to digest, which also, which may give you diarrhea in excess amounts because it's hard to digest. And it is also a type of carbohydrates, but it does not raise your blood sugars as much. And so the glycemic index here, you can see these alcohols are on the lower end of the glycemic index compared to pure sugar. And so the glycemic index is a measure of how quickly a food can raise blood sugar. So only foods that contain carbohydrates have a glycemic index number. So higher the number, the faster it raises your blood sugar, which means if you have this food that contains a high number of a higher number on the glycemic index is going to be harder for you to control your diabetes. However, if you eat the foods on the lower end, it will just raise your blood sugar more slowly which makes your diabetes easier to control. So <clears throat> here's a little chart of some foods on the glycemic index. This green bar here, there are anything less than 55 is on the lower end of the glycemic index. 56 to 67 is in the middle. That's where you have your rice, your pizza, croissants. And then anything greater than 70 or 70 and above are really high on the glycemic index. And that's your brown sugar, your potatoes, your donuts, corn syrup, mashed potatoes, graham crackers, and some other fruits. And so going back to this chart, this zero, which means it won't raise your blood sugars. These two very slowly, and then melatonin the most, but still less than, but still on the low end, because it's less than 55. All right. Non-caloric sugar sweeteners are usually called sugar substitutes because they do not raise your blood sugars. And you can see here on the yellow bar, it's not even on the glycemic index. And so these are usually artificial sweeteners and monk fruits and stevia. So long fruits is coming from like a small melon and stevia from a stevia plant. And the rest are artificial sweeteners. So long fruits is this fruit right here when it's dried. And then you can also buy it in the powder format. They contain a high intensity sweetener called mongroside. And it's very heat stable, acid stable, and water state insoluble in water, so it's very good for drinks or even like making desserts with this. And this one here has the erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol. 
So a little mini overview of the nutrition facts label. You first look at the serving size, and then we're gonna focus on the carbohydrates here. So total carbohydrates is 27 in this eight fluid ounces. Total sugars here is 25 grams. So total sugars is our, uh, the number of sugars naturally occurring in foods, as well as any added sugars. So here, added sugars included is 23 grams, which are sugars added during the processing of foods. And so they're either adding sucrose, dextrose, sugar, syrups, honey, any sweeteners. And so the recommended daily value is 50 grams a day based on a 20,000 calorie diet. However, if you are diabetic, it's best to avoid added sugars as much as possible or aim for single digits, right here, single digit grams. And according to the American Heart Association, Heart Association the added sugar limit should be for men, nine teaspoons or 36 grams, for women, six teaspoons and 25 grams, or 25 grams. And so I found two products. They're both protein bars. This one is utilizing sugar alcohols. So if you're looking at the ingredient list here, we have multitol. And then it also includes a sucralose, which is a artificial sweetener. And so here, one bar, total carbohydrates is 20, and then it only has one gram of total sugars, zero added sugars, but here it's showing you the sugar alcohols, six grams. So that's six grams of malted whole. And this is a bar, Bear Bell's protein bar. And then this one, Premier Refrigerated Protein Bar, is utilizing monk fruit sugar. So here again, if you're looking at the ingredients list, we have organic monk fruit extract, and then it's also listed again here. So again, one bar, total carbohydrates is 15, total sugars is one, but zero added sugars because it's utilizing this monk fruit that is non-caloric. And then if you were to use monk fruit sweeteners, to substitute in some recipes, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And then we have two baked oats recipes here that you can try out. In conclusion, caloric sweeteners raises your blood sugars, and these are your table sugar, your honey, maple syrup, high fructose corn syrup, as well as jaggery, Low caloric sugar sweeteners may raise your blood sugars depending on which ones. And that's your allulose and sugar alcohols. And when consumed in excess amounts, it can cause gastrointestinal issues like diarrhea. And non caloric sugar sweeteners do not raise your blood sugars at all. And these are your artificial sweeteners and monk fruit and stevia. All right, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. And then feel free to contact us with any questions.